Shalom! Today, we will be reading The Creatures of Ugg, written by Charmin Castillo, out of the book Wow Stories, Volume 1, copyright 2007. The Creatures of Ugg Once upon a time, in a far-off land, there lived a community of small bland creatures. They were called Uggs. Uggs were almost round, but not really. Huh? They were mostly shapeless, but you really just couldn't tell. What do you mean? They were gray in color, and the only difference between the males and the females was the fact that the females had eyelashes. Hi. Otherwise, they all had big brown eyes and dots for noses. Their mouths were straight lines under their noses, and they rarely smiled. Yes, we did. When they did, you really couldn't tell. Was that a smile or not? Because their mouths would then resemble a crooked horizontal line. Horizontal? Horizontal? Some Uggs were tall, and some Uggs were short. Some were fat, and some were thin. Shut your On the mouth. whole, there was nothing really special about the Uggs. The Uggs lived their lives much like you and me. They went to work, they married and had children, and some of them attended assembly. They were different in their worship, though. They worshiped the self-proclaimed King Hobart, which the people knew to mean bright or shining intellect. Hobart lived on top of the highest hill. Hobart really wasn't anyone special. You see, one day, maybe about 10 years ago, he got hit by a bus and lived to tell about it. So, he proclaimed that he himself was a god. I'm a god! Because he had been hit by the bus and then lived to tell about Wanna it. Want to hear a story? Here I go. Unfortunately, the Uggs agreed and had been worshiping him ever since. Others just lived their lives and that was that. They worship nobody. Please, that crazy guy on the hill. Really? A religious family. Bobby B. Bobby B. Mother Sniddle yelled. She's always yelling. Oh, Bobby gosh. Bobby B said under his what, breath. What, mother? He was slightly irritated because he had been outside playing with his friends. Go and find your sister, love. It's time to go and worship the great Hobart. Mother said with a smile. She then turned back to walk into the house but was stopped by a question. Find which one? Bobby B asked. He had two after all. Twiddle, silly. The only one we have to look for every time it's time to worship the great Hobart. Mother shook her head as she walked back inside the house humming. Oh, Bobby B said. He agreed with his mother, though. Every single time it was time to worship the great Hobart, Twiddle had to be found. He knew exactly where she was. She was in the blue bonnet pasture, looking into the sky. Twiddle was always asking stupid questions like, where did we come from? Who made the world? What happens after we die? It was especially irritating when she would ask questions like, why in the world do we worship Hobart the Terrible? Bobby B loved Hobart. Sometimes when he went up to the highest hill, to Hobart's huge, beautiful house, Hobart would stand on his balcony and throw down gumdrops. Yes, 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 the best Hobart. gun drop. As he neared the blue bonnet field, he saw his sister. He didn't feel like going all the way into the middle of the field, so he called from the Twiddle. edge. Twiddle, mother wants you. Twiddle, it's time to go and worship Hobart. Again. Bobby Are you yelled. Kidding me? Go away, Twiddle yelled. It was so frustrating to her because week after week she had to go through this ridiculous ritual of worshiping Hobart. It was nothing more than another Ugg, like them all. I'm not going, and neither should you, Bobby B. Girl, hush your mouth. Well, you better. You better come on now, or Mother will be here to get you like last time and embarrass you in front of all the <laughs> others. Bobby B reminded her. Reluctantly, Twiddle rose up and followed Bobby B home. Yes, I guess I don't want to partake in that fiasco again. Oh, Twiddle, 
there you are. You're always the one to make us late. Sorry, you really should learn to manage your time more, my dear. Mother said. She motioned for Twiddle and Bobby B to come and walk with her. Mother and all of the other Uggs who worshipped Hobart were on their way to the highest hill where they met weekly to dance in a circle and throw flowers. They also sang some songs of praise to him. Hobart would come out onto his balcony to enjoy the songs of praise that were being sung to him. Mother, I manage my time just fine. I just don't get why we bother to do this. Hobart is an Ugg, just like you. What? Her or him? Twiddle said, pointing first to her mother and then to two other Uggs. Her mother motioned for her to lower her voice because she might be overheard. Look, we have gone over this time and time again. Hobart is special, Twiddle. He was hit by a bus. And he lived to tell us about it. A bus, Twiddle. A bus. Mother told her with passion. Sister, is that you? Yes, Mother. Walking with your children. Yes, I have the Come on over with here me. and join oh, us. Absolutely, I'm coming. Twiddle looked at her mother, but had to suppress a smile. However, she did continue because the subject was too important to ignore. Wait, Mom, before you go. Mother. So what if Hobart was hit by a bus and lived to tell about it? My appendix ruptured inside me, and I lived to tell about it as well. I'm not telling Uggs to worship me, and I don't want to be worshipped. I told you to lower your voice so that these Uggs don't hear you. Are you deaf? Twiddle then lowered her voice and draped her arms around her mother's shoulders. Mother. Haven't you ever looked up into the sky and thought how magnificent it is? Haven't you ever wondered how we all came to be? No! Look at the trees and the flowers. I mean, they are all so beautiful. And Hobart had nothing to do with it. Mom, I'm sure there's more to this world than we know. Now, I have never heard of any such thing. Now be quiet. We're almost there. I expect you to worship in our circle, of course. Here are your flowers. Mother said, handing her some flowers that were to be used for tossing into the air as they skipped round in a circle. Uh, I'm sorry, Mother, but I'm not participating this time. As a matter of fact, I'm not participating in this ritual ever again. I think it is silly that you all do, but I'm not gonna do it ever again, not me. I'm going to go sit in the grass under the tree over there. Twiddle pointed to a tree. A huge tree at that. <sighs> we will talk about this when we get home, young lady. Do you hear me? Mother said. Um, so everybody go on and grab your flowers and gather around here so we can all worship the great Hobart. Come on now. Twiddle went and sat down underneath the huge tree. She just felt it was silly to worship Hobart when he did nothing spectacular. <clears throat> Not a chow, foam chow, circles. Remember, immediately after the worship service, we will be taking an offering for the flower service for next week. Twiddle just felt there had to be much more to this life than what she could see. She watched as her mother and the others who'd come to worship Hobart got into the groups forming a circle. They would all skip and leap. They would toss rose petals and chant a silly song. Oh my gosh, these people sing on the quarter note. Oh my gosh. Oh, 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 the watch is over us, us both night and, and day. We May hey, your mouth oh, always oh, smile at oh, us. Smile at oh, us. Oh, we, we pray. pray. Hey, 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 hey. Twiddle thought it was a stupid song. The passion they displayed was wasted, and she felt they should all be pursuing the truth, whatever that was. The creatures of Ugg had been worshipping for about half an hour when a moving truck passed by. It could be seen driving towards the residential neighborhood, a lot of them lifting. No one could see who was driving because it was a ways off. Oh my, what's that? 
but they could see a bright light coming from out of the driver's side of the truck. That's odd, said Twiddle to herself. Worship service broke up quickly after that, which left Hobart in a foul mood. But who could blame the Uggs? No one had moved into their small community in over 20 years. Oh my gosh, Mother. I bet you they're moving in across the street from our house. How exciting. I've never met anybody new before. I don't even know what new is, Mother, Twiddle said. Yes, it is exciting. I'll make some pie as soon as we get home, and then later we can take it to them so that we can introduce ourselves. Mother was already picking out the recipe she would use in her head. <laughs> Mother, did you happen to see the bright lights coming out of the truck? Bobby Bee asked. Yes, I did, but I thought that perhaps they were reading something, you know? Mother said lamely. Oh my gosh, this lady. It's daylight. All they have to do is open their eyes, Twiddle said. Oh well, that's not important. Let's just get home, hurry. Mother said, picking up her pace. There was a vacant house across the street from the Snittles house because the prior owners had moved away to a new home in a new town. The Snittles walked up to their home and sure enough, the moving van that had driven by during the worship service of Hobart was parked out front of the vacant house. Others who had been with them also stopped to see who had moved in across the street. Mother Snittle and the others observed the lights moving back and forth in the undraped windows. Uggs began to comment in the crowd about the lights in the window. After what seemed like eons, someone finally emerged from out of the house. It was unlike any other Ugg they had ever seen. It was the same as them, but not the same, because although this Ugg or thing looked like them, it had the most brilliant light coming from within. What the heck is that? <gasps> Mother, I thought you were a born-again Hobartian. Mother, Twiddle said in shock because of her mother's language, why don't we just go and ask? Twiddle made as if to walk towards the new neighbor's house, but her brother stayed her hand. No, Twiddle. You don't know what that thing will do to you. Oh no, look, there are more of them. I'm going inside, Bobby B said. And indeed, he did run inside. Others in the crowd began to run as well. Twiddle, on the other hand, shook her head and began to walk across the street to find out who or what the new Uggs were. Twiddle! Come back here right this instant. Oh my gosh. Unreal. Twiddle. Better do as I see or else. You are the most fearful Hobartians I've ever met. Oh, Mother, Twiddle said. But she did turn around and obey her mother because it was the right thing to do. She did, however, stop there because no matter what, she was not going to worship Hobart. Twiddle and her mother, along with about a dozen other Uggs, looked on as a smiling creature who appeared to be an Ugg of Light Hello. came out of the front door, followed by a smiling female Ugg of Light, who was also followed by two smaller smiling Uggs of Light. Hi. They all smiled and waved at the small crowd gathered across the street from their home. I felt out of comfort. When they didn't get not one response, they simply went to the moving van and removed the last of their boxes and furniture. When what appeared to be the father of the family took the last lamp off the truck, he turned around and smiled and waved goodbye to everyone who was still standing outside. Soon afterwards, the crowd dispersed and went back to their homes. When the Snittles returned inside their home, Mother told Bobby Bee and Twiddle to go upstairs to their rooms and to take a bath while she prepared the evening meal. The children did as the mother told them. When they were done, they ran downstairs as 
as usual and found Father Sniddle already at the table. So they kissed him and took their places at the table. Turn that TV off! Twiddle, what is this I hear about you going over to introduce yourself to the strange Uggs moving in across the street? Father asked. Oh, Father, please. I don't understand how you and Mother are so narrow-minded. I mean, they are new for crying out loud. I just want to make them feel welcome. Twiddle tried to explain. Well, I don't want you nowhere around them. I have seen Uggs like them before. They teach a different religion than the one we practice. So I don't want them to have the chance to try and influence you into converting to their religion. Okay, Father, why would they do that? What is it exactly that they believe, Father? And how come you don't believe? Twiddle asked. I don't believe because I know the truth. Hobart is our focus of worship, Father said. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I want you to stay away from those lights of creatures or creatures of light, whatever they are, Father said. Pity, Twiddle shook her head. Mother, Father, I know you mean well, but I cannot and will not do as you ask because you two are wrong. And if others come to the same conclusion as you two, then pity on them too. How would you feel if you were new and every time you tried to meet someone or smile, or you know, smiled at them, the only response you received was to be alienated by everyone? I'm sorry, but I cannot be a party to your cruelty. Twiddle shook her head and walked away to her room without eating. Twiddle! Mother called out. Let her go. She just needs time to think this over, I'm sure. Why would she want to get involved with these Uggs anyway? Look at them. They're filled with light. Father asked in disgust. Well, I'm going to enjoy my dinner. So let's all just dig in. And you can have your sisters. Bobby B sat with the side of his face resting on his right hand as he looked out the window and without even thinking he said, Yes, but we sure do look so drab. What did you say? Father yelled. Nothing, Bobby B stammered. Well, you said something, boy. Speak up. Well, I, 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 nothing, Father. I, I, I was talking to myself. Bobby D then got up from his seat at the table and went upstairs as well. He had touched none of his food. Bobby B and Twiddle sat in their rooms, looking out the window across the street to their new neighbor's house. Usually. Their older sister, Tinker, was at home, but Mother had forgotten that she had allowed her to stay the night at a friend's house, and she would not return until tomorrow night. They had stayed up late last night, talking about the day and the new neighbors of light trying to figure out what it meant. Bobby and Twiddle both agreed that they would be nice to the little Uggs across the street because they knew they would never want to be treated that way if they were new someplace. Bobby B was not too interested in their religion because he loved Hobart. After all, he was all he had ever known. But right now, he was more interested in making a new friend. Twiddle, on the other hand, was a little more skeptical about religion in general. But she, too, wanted a new friend and she wanted to know why they looked to be on fire. Bobby B had come into his sister's room that morning. They once again jumped into conversation about the new neighbors across the street. Suddenly, Twiddle saw the young Uggs walk outside their home. Okay, there they are, Bobby B. You stay here in case they try to do something to me. That way you can call mother and she'll be able to come help me. I'm going outside to talk to them now. Be careful. Twiddle ran down the stairs and went outside. She stood for a few minutes and then mustered up all the courage she could and found herself walking across the street, 
to find them. Hi, I'm Twiddle. Who are you? Twiddle smiled, but felt so ridiculous. What a stupid thing to say when you meet someone for the first time. The two young Uggs on the other side stopped and smiled. Hi, Twiddle. I'm Constance, and this is my brother, Dre. I saw you all moving in yesterday. As a matter of a fact, the whole neighborhood did. We first saw you when you drove by when we were up at the big mountain worshiping Hobart. Twiddle smiled. Oh, you worship Hobart? Dre asked. Yes, uh, I mean, no, I mean, Twiddle blushed red. No, I don't worship Hobart, but my family does. I don't believe Hobart is any different from anyone else. Oh, <laughs> Constance laughed. Well, I guess you are wondering where we come from and what our parents do and such. Duh. Uh, well, no. actually, no. What I was really wondering is, why are you so full of light? That is odd to us. We have never seen anybody like you, Twiddle said as a matter of fact. Oh, well, that's because of who lives inside me, Constance said. Okay, so who do you think lives inside you? Twiddle said, trying not to laugh. It's not who I think, it is who I know. I mean, after all, I am an Ugg just like you. But I have a light in me that is very evident to all who look at me. I didn't do it by myself, so it had to be someone. And it is the one I serve, Constance said with love glowing in her eyes. Oh, well, who is it that you serve and where is he or she at? Twiddle asked, feeling a little frustrated. All she wanted was a clear answer. She was tired of playing musical words and wanted Constance to get to the point. Well, Twiddle, we serve the Most High, who lives in the heavens, but comes down to live in our hearts when we accept what he has done for us by his son on Calvary. Constance then told her brother to go inside to get the word. You see, Twiddle, we believe in one Elohim, and his name is Yahuwah. We were separated from him because of our ancestors who broke the covenant with him. But because of his son and what he did by sacrificing his life for us, we are now able to be with him again. We believe that we are sinners, and sinners are Uggs who transgress Yahuwah's laws. Those things keep us separated from the Abba, and Abba means Father. Just then, Twiddle heard her name being called from across the Get street. Here. Mother stood at the door with a furious frown on her face. Twiddle blushed and was about to turn and run off when Dre ran back outside. He was carrying something called the Word in his hand. Constance took it from him and gave it to Twiddle. It was a Bible. I know you have to go, so take this and give it back later when you can. It was nice meeting you. Maybe we can be friends. And when school starts again after the summer, maybe we can hang out. I like that, Twiddle said. She then turned and ran home. Mother closed the door sharply behind her as she came inside the house. She marched to the bottom of the stairs and yelled up for Twiddle to come back down. Yes, Mother? Twiddle said a little nervously. Don't you yes mother me. You purposely disobeyed your father and me. You will stay in your room for a week by yourself. Tinker just called and the Applebee's have asked her to go with them on a holiday to a camping trip. I gave her my permission so you will be in your room by yourself. Do I make myself clear this time? That means you stay out of that room Bobby B. Mother yelled. How will I eat, Mother? Twiddle asked. Don't be smart. You'll come down and eat with the family, of course. Now get upstairs and no TV. Read a book. Mother then turned away. Twiddle watched from the top of the stairs as her mother marched off. I am upstairs. 
Oh well, that would give her time to read this book. So Twiddle sat down and began at the beginning of the book. It said, in the beginning, Elohim made the heavens and the earth. Twiddle's heart began pumping very fast. She was so enthralled by the story that she kept reading and reading. Twiddle had just begun to read about the radiance on the face of an Ugg named Moses when she heard her mother coming up the stairs. Body me. I have tripped over a toy one too many times. If I have to pick up your toys, you won't have any more. In a hurry, she put the word down, also known as the Bible, and got out a novel when the door opened up to her room. Okay then, you can come out now. I know that this must be very hard for you and all being up here in your room, but I will have obedience in my house. Do you hear me, Twiddle? Yes, mother, Twiddle answered. Good, now go and wash up and then go downstairs. Twiddle complied, and after she had finished all of her toiletries, she ran downstairs and sat at the table. Her mother prayed and asked Hobart to bless their food, bless although food. Twitter knew that he could not. And Bobby B was also coming to the same conclusion that he probably could not. The family sat down and began to eat their food. Every so often, Twitter would look up to see her mother or father staring at her in the most peculiar kind of way. And she wondered why. But she didn't have to wonder long, because her tactless brother broke the silence. So, what's up with your face and hands, Twiddle? Are you sick? Bobby B asked. I don't know what you mean. I feel fine, Twiddle said. Hmm. Well, you sure don't look yourself, Twiddle. Your color looks a little lighter. You look a little pale. Are you sure you're all right? Mother asked in concern. Believe me, if I were sick, you would all be the first to know it. Twiddle answered to reassure them. They all knew that she didn't handle sickness very well. Why would they ask such a silly question? After dinner, Twiddle helped Mother with the dishes, but as soon as she was done, Mother had her go right back up to her room. She was quite fine with going to her room because she knew that the Word, or rather the Bible, was waiting for her to return. So, to her room she went, and then she jumped on the bed and pulled the book from underneath her pillow. She then lay down and began to read. Wow, it says that Yahuwah created the heavens and the earth in six days and rested on the seventh. Every chapter she read, she would feel something begin to tingle inside of her until finally she drifted off to sleep. The next morning, Twiddle got up a little early and began reading where she left off from the previous night. She accidentally dropped the word, and as she picked it up, it opened to a section that said, The Renewed Covenant, and her heart just really began to pound. She marked the place in the chapter she previously was in and began to read The Renewed Covenant. She had been reading a half an hour when her mother called for her to come down Twiddle. to breakfast. Come down here and eat. Twiddle got up and ran to the bathroom. She washed her face and brushed her teeth. She closed her eyes and thought about the way this book said the world was made. She had also began reading the New Covenant, which explained the chronological birth order of an Ugg named Yeshua. The book said that he was the savior to the true Uggs of Yashrael. She was just so excited. She just couldn't understand it. But all along she knew that there had to be more to this world than she could see. I knew it. I tell you, I knew it. She knew for a fact that Hobart hadn't done any of these things that this Elohim Yahuwah had done. And she just couldn't wait to start reading again after breakfast. Good morning, family, Twiddle said happily. Good morning, my dear, Mother said from the kitchen. She was making a plate for Twiddle. As soon as she was done, she turned and walked towards the table. 
but she dropped everything in her hands and ran to Twiddle. What's wrong with you? I told you not to go over to those other Uggs' house the other day. And now look at you. You're definitely changing somehow, Twiddle. Come on, Bobby B. Go get in the car. We're taking your sister to the doctor's. Miss Sniddle was frantic. Mother, I'm not going anywhere. I have never felt better in all of my 16 years on this earth, Twiddle said. Well, then what is wrong with you? Mother yelled. Mother, really? What is wrong with you? Look at yourself. I mean, Twiddle, go look at yourself. Twiddle got up from the dining room table and went to stare at herself in the bathroom mirror. She was shocked at what she saw. In her heart was a little flame and it was burning softly. The soft glow of the light in her heart gave an iridescent glow to her skin. That must be why her family thought she was looking sick last night. Twiddle said to herself, Wow, that word must really be true. Because not only was she changing in her mind, but her outer appearance was changing as well. Twitter ran out of the bathroom and ran to her mother and kissed her. Mother, I'm not sick. Please rest assured that I'll be fine, I promise you. What did that girl say to you the other day, Twiddle? I want to know right now, Mother said. Well, she told me what she believed, Mother, and everything she said made very good sense. She told me that she worshipped Yahuwah and that he created the earth and the sky. She, she said that even we, the Uggs, were created by him. Mom, there is so much. Maybe by the end of the week, I can sit down and tell you. You go to your room right now, young lady. And when your father gets home today, he'll have a good talk with you. Do you hear me? Mother was very angry. Twiddle was more than happy to go to her room. She did not dare tell her mother about the word for fear of her taking it from her. She went upstairs to her room and locked the door this time because she knew that her mother would come up at any time. She picked up the word and read the first five books of it by the time it was almost time for her father to get home. She set the word down under her pillow. She got down on her hands and knees and began to pray to the Elohim she had just heard about. Um, dear Mr. Yahuwah, it is nice to meet you. I am Twiddle. All of my life, I have felt that there was more to this life than what we really knew about, and one day when I was older, I had planned to pursue it. But it seems like you came to me first. I want you to know that I believe everything you said in this book here, and I'm thankful for the love you showed us by sending your son. I would also like to invite you and him into my heart forever. I repent for my transgressions against your law, but I have to find out what it is and then I will do it. So please be patient with me as I learn what those laws are because I really don't know or understand. So please, please give me an opportunity, Mr. Yahuwah, to learn everything that I need to know. As soon as she said that, a brilliant <gasps> oh light gosh. came forth from her. What is and she this? stood and began praising <gasps> Yahuwah. Oh, thank she you. She ran to the mirror thank in her you. room and rejoiced at her transformation. Oh my gosh, thank Then she you. became fearful because her parents and everyone else would know. But then she remembered also that if she were ashamed of this new ashamed. relationship I'm so she was having thankful. with Yeshua, you. then he would be ashamed of her when he introduced her to his father. So she wasn't willing to go through that. She knew that Yahuwah was real because, come on, look at the change in her. This must be why the Uggs crossed the street glowed because they know Yahuwah. And that is why her family and everyone else in town are gray because none of them know Yahuwah or his son, Yeshua. They only know Hobart, the imposter. Outside, Twiddle heard a car door slam and somebody run into the house. She knew it could not be her father because they had come home a half hour ago. She was curious 
but she knew she couldn't go downstairs till mother called her. Suddenly, there was a loud scream and voices raised in anger. Fear gripped Twiddle like a glove and she bolted out of her room. As she was coming down the stairs, she could hear her mother yelling at someone and that someone turned out to be her older sister, Tinker. So Twiddle tiptoed to the entrance of the kitchen and gasped audibly, but still no one acknowledged her presence. Sitting in the kitchen at the table was her very own sister, Tinker, glowing just like her. She rushed into the room. Mother Sniddle looked up as Twiddle ran into the room. She let out a heart-wrenching yeah. scream and fainted dead away. Oh, Mother, you're so dramatic. I hate to see how you react when I finish telling you everything, Tinker said, as she too went to assist Twiddle in picking her mother up from off the floor. Well, Twiddle, I see you too have found out the truth, Tinker winked. I have, Twiddle said. What have you girls done? You've destroyed our family. This is a Hobart-believing family, Father shouted. Tinker, who was Father's favorite, went and put her arms around her dad and said, Father, I am still the same Ugg, and I love you all the same. I did not go through this transformation for nothing. It was Yahuwah, the Father, and Yeshua, his son, who did this to me. I have a book that I want you to read, and it will explain everything. <laughs> Nonsense. You mean, you mean this book called the Bible, the Word? Bobby B said coming in, looking a little less gray. I see you've been reading it as well, Tinker said. I'm losing my children, Father said sitting down next to a slop. Of course we are, they're reading headache. that bibble. Bibble, mother, are you serious? There's an E at the end of the word, and the I is long, it's Bible. Bible, Bible, not important. Oh, mother, very important. No, father, you are not. We're the same. We just now see so much more. Daddy, you and mother and I have been wrong about Hobart. He is just an ugh like the rest of us. We were on our way out of town when the Applebee's wanted to stop by and worship Hobart. When we got there, there were others there as well. Some were glowing and some were not. You could tell that the ones who were not glowing had dragged the ones who were glowing there in the first place. Uggs were crying everywhere. Finally, after about a half an hour, Hobart came out onto his balcony and father, he was glowing. He came down to us himself and introduced some new Uggs who had just moved in. Apparently, this Ugg was an Ugg brew and he said that Yahuwah had called him to this part of the world to witness and to bring many to his son. It's working, but mother and father, the choice is yours. It has been four months since Twiddle's eyes were open to the truth of who she was and who the true creator was, and her walk is growing daily. Many Uggs have given their lives to Yahuwah and have repented and are now following his laws, statutes, and commandments. But many do not want anything to do with this new way of worship. But even Hobart has started to gather with the new assembly started in their land. And although Ugg still try to worship him, Hobart will have none of that. He is quick to tell them that he is not the way. I'm not the way. And then he witnesses. They either come to the sun or they don't. It is their choice. At the Sniddles house, father and mother have begun to read the word too, in order to find out exactly what it is their children are involved with. They seem to look a little less great every day. Wow, isn't Yah's word amazing? As soon as you start reading it, changes take place in your life and in your heart. And once you start applying his word and doing his laws, his statutes and commandments, a change takes place for all to see. If you hadn't already noticed, the Uggs are you and me before we meet Yah, before we meet Yeshua. But after we do, that blame starts to develop in our hearts and it starts becoming evident to anybody who looks upon us. Wow. All right, all right, all right. Thank you so much for joining me again for another WOW Stories. And I hope that you'll join me again. You know, 
brothers, sisters, and little Yala Dean. Once we pick up Yah's word and we truly apply it to our lives, how can the world not see our light? Isn't that what we are all called to do and all called to be? Vessels of light to draw not only our lost brothers and sisters, but to draw the world, the rest of the world, to our light so that we can introduce them to the Most High, our Abba Yahuwah, and to Yeshua, His Son. Amazing. So once again, all praises to our Abba and to His beautiful Son, Yeshua. And I hope you'll join me again for another WOW Stories. And until next time, Shalom.